everybody, welcome to Knitting with Froggenet. I'm Lisa, uh, I'm a knitwear designer who focuses on children and baby knitwear. Sorry it's been uh, a while, uh, but uh, I'm happy to report that I've been knitting a lot and um, I've finished quite a few uh, sort of big projects that I'm pretty excited to show you. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump into the finished objects. So the first finished object I want to show you is actually the one I'm wearing right now. Uh, you can only see the top part right now, but it's actually a full, you know, color work project. Um, I mentioned it before uh, in uh, my previous podcasts. Uh, it's the Grerup, I don't know if I'm saying it right, um, Grerup, Grerup sweater by Camilla Vad, and uh, she's a Danish designer, I believe, um, who's pretty well known. Uh, she's made this um, Magnolia sweater and then the whole series, the cardigan, it's available in different weights as well. Um, so she's pretty uh, popular and this um, particular design when I first saw it I thought oh man I just absolutely want to knit this um, but you know it was a little bit daunting it's a lot of color work I just wasn't sure if I would sort of be able to commit to something sort of this big um, but uh, I'm really glad that I did and that I finished it um, and I'm so so happy with it um, I'm quite proud that I managed to make something like this. Um, I have to say I'm especially happy with the color selection uh, and also that I used uh, only stash yarn. Um, I was a little bit worried until the end that I wouldn't have enough um, of some of the colors, uh, but it worked out and um, let me see. Uh, I'm gonna grab my computer and see what kind of notes I have for this project. Uh, let's see, what did I write on Ravelry? Um, so I was a little bit worried about the length of the sleeves as written, so I added a color work section so the way this sweater uh, is knit is that you start with the bottom uh, and you go towards the top. And um, so it's a little bit tricky to figure out how long to make the sleeves because of course it will depend on your yoke length uh, that you get in the end. So if you, if you have a really long yoke length, yoke length sorry, um, then it will affect you know, how low your sleeves go because it'll pull everything down. Um, so I kind of um, decided to add one repeat of, uh, I think it's like this X repeat that I added. I also added a few uh, rows here. Um, and then I thought since I'm using, uh, since I used um, super wash yarn for this uh, sweater that I could probably uh, sort of encourage it to grow a bit uh, during blocking, which it did. So it worked out pretty well. Let's see. Um, I used German short rows. Yes, I, the main modification I did, let's see. Uh, yes, the main modification I did was um, that I modified the neckline because the way it was written for me, it was a bit too high. Uh, so what I did is I frogged back and I did six fewer rounds before starting the short rows and also did an extra pair of short rows. Um, and I, I explain everything, you know, how I positioned the short rows in um, my Ravelry project. And my overall notes for this is a great design, but the pattern is only suitable for experienced color work knitters, in my opinion since only a basic color work chart is provided. You have to figure out how to keep the color work correct while shaping. So this is um, for the sleeves, the shaping of the sleeves. You, you need to add, uh, you know, stitches. You make increases as you go. You know, the sleeves sort of taper this way. And also when you start shaping here, 
you know, decreasing. <clears throat> you just have to always keep the color work correct, which is okay if you're experienced and you sort of, um, I think, have, have done this before. Uh, but you, you're sort of on your own as far as like how to place um, the um, decreases and increases. It's not all spelled out for you. So it's something important to know before you start. Uh, da, da, da. I love the way the colors transition. Wasn't sure about the textured bits in the yolk. So this, at first I wasn't sure if I should just leave it out. Um, but, you know, I actually really like it. I feel like... Like you would think that, oh, it's already quite a busy sweater. Okay, maybe this is too much. But in fact, I think that uh, makes it quite special. Um, I don't know. I really, I really like it. Um, I, would have, I would not have thought of um, doing this as a designer, I have to say. But, you know, I think it's, it was a really good design idea. Because it sort of echoes, you know, the, the pattern. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Computer's falling. The pattern here really echoes the color work pattern. So it works, I think. Um, yeah, so very happy with this. Um, very happy with, excuse me, how sort of smooth and crisp the, the color work is. Um, as you can see, it's, it's um, I didn't use like a, a woolly yarn like it's not hairy uh, quote unquote like usually you'd see in more traditional uh, color work patterns this you know you have to use you have to you use very often these kind of very woolly yarns uh, I mean there's a reason for it like it, it at the back uh, the, the strands kind of end up matting into each other and it makes the sweater I guess more durable and like maybe warmer um, and there's more chance of, if you, if you see, let me show you. See, everything is just very sort of smooth um, on the wrong side. So the, I guess there's more chance of catching the floats uh, into something or like into your fingers when you put on the sweater. Um, but I also really like the effect. I feel like it really makes the, the pattern very crisp and uh, very kind of striking. Um, like it's not as, you know, fuzzed out or something, like it's not as fuzzy. Um, so yeah, the, I feel like the, the pattern really stands out. So um, I kind of liked it. Um, I wasn't sure how, it, how well it was gonna work to do it with this kind of yarn, but um, yeah, I, uh, I'm really happy. I de-stashed while doing this. Um, so all in all, I think a big success. Hello again. I just had a little <laughs> wardrobe change. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you uh, my second finished object, which is the um, Starfall sweater by uh, Jennifer Steingath. And um, yeah, I don't even know if I mentioned this to you last time. I don't think I did because I knit this in three weeks. Um, that is not a long time because there's, you know, color work on the sleeves. And also um, at the hem, you know, and it's, you know, it's like, it's, it's a worsted weight. Um, pattern so it's pretty you know it goes pretty quickly but still you know three weeks is not a long time uh, for a whole sweater an adult sweater I was just knitting non-stop I was so stressed out <laughs> with the you know US election and everything um, anyway I just needed to knit and this felt really nice because this yarn is quite uh, rustic um, the whole point of this sweater was again I wanted to de-stash a bit and I have had this yarn um, by a Portuguese company called uh, Retrosaria um, that I've had since my first child was about a year old. Um, I remember because this is the first trip we took with my husband without him. We left him with my parents uh, for a few days and we went to Portugal, to Lisbon. And I found this beautiful um, yarn store 
uh, called Retrosaria, and they made their own yarns and everything. And I bought some skeins of this um, very rustic um, yarn that's like a, it's a local breed of sheep. And, um, and it's been just sitting there waiting for the right project. Um, I bought this color for this yarn, the kind of, it's a weird like grayish brown. Um, and then I also got this sort of yellowish color right here. And uh, yeah, it was a little tricky because as you can see, um, let me see if I can show you. There's like these kind of um, variegation areas. Um, so I needed a design that would be a little bit forgiving um, and where the attention would be on something else. Like, so I thought um, a yoke sweater would be perfect. The other yarns that I used, um, I think I used Brooklyn Shelter um, in this orangey color, this rust color. I don't know if you can see. And then what else did I use? Oh yeah, the, the, the paler gray color is a uh, Gilead by Deririm Natura. Um, and it all worked out pretty, pretty well. And what can I say about this? Um, this is also a bottom up sweater. And um, so you start with the hem and the, the, the sleeve cuffs, and then you join everything at underarm level. And then the ending is the color work, which might be why um, I ended up doing knitting it pretty quickly because you know I really wanted to reach the color work portion and have fun and uh, so you needed to do all that stuck in it um, first so that worked out pretty well for me um, what to say uh, yeah oh yeah I made um, one modification I made is I just started with the uh, so this is a medium size which is what I would normally knit for myself but I, I like having a little bit more room in the hips. So I actually started with a large size for the cast on. And then I added um, some decreases until I reached um, the stitch count for the medium size. And then did all the medium for the sleeve and um, for the yoke. And um, the pattern was really well written. I was really impressed with this pattern, I have to say. And even more impressed uh, was with the shaping and like this yoke. It, this is not um, a hybrid, as far as I can remember, right? Uh, yeah, this is not a hybrid sort of circular and raglan um, yoke, which I think is kind of a nice compromise because usually circular, circular yokes tend to not fit that great for some reason. Like they tend to kind of fall too low and then you have the weird like smaller sleeves that like every time you like go like this the whole yoke like really <laughs> lifts I don't know how to explain it but I, I, I feel like pretty often it's it's kind of hard to find a good um, circular yoke pattern in my opinion and I have to say this one is really good um, she the way she kind of placed um, the decrease rows I thought was kind of unusual and really good. And she also placed um, a few short row rounds, um, which also helps, you know, uh, to get a great fit. Um, and then I wasn't sure about the, you know, this sort of I chord finish. Uh, I thought, oh, well, is it a little too, uh, you know, dainty or something? Like, I thought, well, maybe I should just stick with ribbing. Um, but I thought, okay, I'll try the eye cord bind off first. And then if I don't like it, it's easy enough to remove it and just do regular ribbing. But I really, really like it. In fact, another surprise. Um, and I think it fits really well. I've been wearing this sweater nonstop. Um, I actually wear it almost as often as my Ridari sweater, which is like the most comfy, you know, kind of oversized, um, sweater that I have but this one is a close second and I'm just almost like a little disappointed that I didn't knit it with more sort of vivid colors um, which would be more in line with uh, what the designer actually has for her sample um, this is more sort of subdued I guess like with this sort of 
yeah, this kind of strange brown grayish color. Um, like I'm almost wanting to knit another one <laughs> and use like kind of a bright sort of blue or, you know, something quite vibrant. Um, but what I'll probably do instead is knit uh, another sweater by this designer because she's got so many color work sweaters and that's kind of her specialty. And uh, actually in the end of this episode, I'll have a new section called um, sort of, I don't know yet what I'm gonna call it, like uh, my favorites or something like that, uh, where I'm gonna kind of show you what, um, what I've noticed, what kind of struck my eye. Uh, in the recent um, releases on Ravelry, and I'll, I'll I'll show you one of the patterns actually is by the same designer, and I'm kind of thinking maybe next year, like early next year, I'll knit it. So anyway, I'll show you later. Uh, let's see, what did I say in my Ravelry project about this one? Uh, I don't think I had that much to say. Yeah, I didn't really say anything because honestly, it was just really really straightforward and um, I am just really happy with it. At first I thought it was going to make me look dead or something like, you know, make my my complexion look extra pale and like unhealthy. <laughs> um, and I probably wouldn't wear it like without any makeup on, like first thing in the morning uh, in the winter. <laughs> but uh, it's not it's not so bad, right? Like it's OK. Um, I look OK with it, I think. Um, so that's it for the second finished object. Now for the next one. Here's another costume change for you. <laughs> uh, you can't really see that much actually um, since, wait a minute. This is my Tegna sweater. Ooh, can you see? Um, oh, I can't really show you. Maybe I should back up. Oh, you know what? What I'll do is I'll just insert some B-roll of uh, me sort of modeling this later. Um, this is the Tegna sweater. Um, it's by Caitlin Hunter. And um, I used this really gorgeous um, yak, baby yak, actually, baby yak silk blend by Mayak, Mayak, Miak. I don't know how to say it. Um, yarn that um, my mother actually sent me and I was a little bit worried that I might not have quite enough but uh, it worked out perfectly and in fact I actually had a little bit too much <laughs> um, but um, what can I say about this sweater well I did wear it a couple of times before the weather started getting a little bit too cold for it it's more of a um, summer sweater uh, I made the sleeves um, sort of elbow length and uh, I made a size large and I think did I I forget I, I will need to um, check my notes uh, but I remember that I made the sweater a little bit shorter because um, a lot of the notes for this pattern people's notes um, said that the shoulder depth was a little bit um, narrow a little bit uh, too short and so I followed the yeah, that's what I did. I followed the size large for the shoulder depth uh, so that they would be a little more roomy. So I knew that that would add a little bit of length overall. So I made the body portion a little bit shorter. Um, the lace part um, was, I think it's really gorgeous. Um, I did make a few mistakes <laughs> uh, and I, it was a lot, you know, I had to pay attention every second. Um, I really recommend using markers um, between lace repeats if you make the sweater. It really helps uh, immediately zero in on mistakes. And um, yeah, overall, you know, I love the color. It's this kind of terracotta colored, um, which I think will look really nice um, with more of a bit of a tan than what I have right now. Uh, so I'm looking forward to wearing this uh, next summer. So uh, I put this back on because I was a little bit chilly with the uh, Tegna sweater on. 
so now my next finished object is actually a design uh, and it's the first design of my Little Grey Cells collection, volume one. Uh, this is a five um, uh, pattern collection, only garments, no sort of um, accessory patterns, uh, just uh, fully graded from three months old to 10 years old. And the very first design that I released, um, I believe in September, was uh, Arthur. And it's a little, it's a little color work vest that calls for sport weight. And um, that's a 12 month old sample. And here you have a more sort of girly version and a tiny little three months old version. I think it's just so cute. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, so this is called Arthur. It's named after Arthur Hastings, Hercule Poirot's best friend. Um, who's this really, you know, uh, very loyal, um, very earnest character who also has a very good sense of style. He's always, uh, I don't know if you watch the Poirot um, series, um, but uh, he's always wearing these uh, sort of beautiful Fair Isle vests when they're in the countryside uh, sleuthing. And I thought that uh, this was, would be just perfect for that sort of inspiration. And I used uh, my favorite yarn for color work, which is uh, the Rerum Natura Ulis. Um, it's kind of a more woolen type yarn. Um, so here, you know, unlike what I uh, was talking about for this sweater here, uh, here you have more of a sort of fuzzy halo. And this is a lot more traditional. And you know, you can see that the inside has these floats that, well, of course this is not being worn by anyone. They're just samples, but um, this would, you know, after a while start sort of uh, rubbing like this and it would get to be a little bit felted uh, and that would sort of stabilize that whole layer of floats. Um, let's see what, to say about this. I think this is a very, very versatile um, pattern. You know, you could make it long and make it a really cool uh, sort of tunic uh, dress um, for little girls. Um, but of course, you know, this is just the thing for sort of a dapper little outfit, um, perfect little sort of uh, new baby present, um, you know, a nice thing for uh, a more formal, um, occasion, Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, birthday. And uh, I think it's a really good way to practice color work. It's very simple. There's no increases, no decreases. Um, you know, you can just repeat the, the sequence um, just for just as long as you need it to be. You can easily adjust the length if you need to. Uh, and you can also reuse this pattern as a template to just make something very, very simple, just, uh, you know, regular stock in that, just one color or even stripes. Um, and so here I made the color work just in this portion to avoid, I didn't do the full on color work here because otherwise you would probably need either steaks, which is, you know, cutting into your knitting, uh, which is a technique that, you know, a lot of people use and that's fine, but a lot of uh, sort of more beginner knitters are afraid of it. Um, so you would either use steaks or uh, you would need to do color work on the wrong side, which uh, not many people love either. Uh, and there would be, you know, a million sort of ends to deal with along these edges. It, I thought that it looked really pretty just like that. And this way it's a very straightforward, uh, but very, very satisfying pattern. It's really fun to choose colors. Uh, one of these days I'm going to have to do a video about color work and sort of explore uh, you know, all the different tips I have and the way I pick colors, for example, because it's actually harder than it looks. Uh, you can't just put, you know, whatever colors you think you like together and hope for the best. Like they kind of have to have a certain amount of contrast and um, sometimes something that doesn't look like it will go together actually really makes something pop. And um, yeah, so 
This was my first um, design of that um, Agatha Christie inspired collection. And now for the second design. Okay, the last finished object that I'm going to show you is um, this, well, actually, it's actually two of them. It's two samples for my second design of the Little Grey Cells uh, Volume 1 collection, and it's the Hercule uh, cardigan. And let me show you. So there's two versions. There's this one. Oops, a little pocket square fell off. Let me put it back in. We need the pocket square. So, check it out. So, uh, this is the version with all the pockets. So you have, you know, the two body pockets that would have that have the little flap like that and the little mini let me take this off show you the little chest pocket it's is very small and very neatly done it's really fun to work this pocket the technique you use it tiny little pocket here which of course you know so this is like the full on you know uh, look the sort of jacket uh, suit jacket look you know a very formal look I mean tongue-in-cheek of course um, with all the pockets or you could just make the very simplified version with you know just the notched color to add a little something and just no pockets just a simple little cardigan and this is super super straightforward to knit like really no brainer. It's a worsted weight, so it goes very fast. This would be a really fantastic new baby um, present, I think. Look at how cute it is with that color. It just, you know, it, it's kind of like this, the cross between like a grandpa sweater, but like with a little sort of formal twist to it, but it's really just a very comfy cardigan, so super easy to wear, very practical. And the funny thing is that even though, you know, we tend to think that small babies don't need pockets uh, one of my testers made this version and she actually left off the bottom pockets for her baby it was i think like a 12 months old version or something but she kept this one and she uses this for the the little the binky clip you know those uh binkies that baby babies um always lose and then you have this kind of leash uh, and then you have to clip the leash onto something. Well, she uses that little pocket to clip that leash on it. It's, it's like genius. I thought it was actually really practical. So there you go, like a formal chest pocket with an actual practical use. So I wouldn't have thought about it myself. So this is Hercule and of course inspired by Hercule Poirot. And um, I kind of was wondering what to make for him. Uh, and then, you know, he's always super formally dressed. Um, always, uh, you know, a full on super formal suit. And so I thought, okay, I have to make a suit jacket, but I also wanted it to be a little bit casual in the execution. You know, at first I thought, oh, I'm gonna make it really crisp with all this like I cord edging. And, uh, but then I thought, you know, I really just need to have the effect of the suit and just, I want it to be a kind of a fun, like non fiddly, experience um so i was really trying to find sort of the essence of the suit jacket without going into complicated um or not complicated but like more fiddly techniques so yeah i wanted to do this and uh yeah i think i succeeded i'm very happy with it um the yarn i use for these two designs is this yarn um by manos del uruguay uh, who actually provided yarn support for for this design and um, I will put the info about the type of yarn uh, that it is and the different colorways, those two grays, which I think is, are really gorgeous. This sort of light gray and this sort of dark stormy gray. And I think they have just the right am amount of sort of tonal quality. Like it's not completely 
um, what's the word? Like there's still a little bit of color variation, but it's very subtle. Um, so I didn't notice any pooling or anything like that. So I really enjoyed this yarn. Um, and let's see, I think that's it. Um, just to let you know that um, my, the third design of the collection uh, is, in test uh, is in testing right now. And it should be out within the next three weeks or something. Uh, if you want to be notified when I release the next design or any of my designs, you can sign up for my newsletter. Uh, the link is in the description uh, in the video. And this way you also get the best discounts uh, for all my pattern releases. Uh, yes, so let's see. What else can I talk about? Oh, a few very, very cool works in progress. So my first uh, work in progress that I want to show you is um, this sweater that I'm making for myself uh, using Malabrigo Rios, which is one of my favorite yarns of all time, uh, in the colorway gris, uh, which means gray in French. And this is what I've got so far. So as you can see, um, so this, this is a pattern called Madoka and it's by a French designer uh, whose name is um, Marianne Meunier and um, I just loved this sweater as soon as I saw it um, and I thought, oh, that's going to be a lot, a lot of cabling. Do I want to, <laughs> do I want to do this? Uh, I have to focus so much, but I'm so glad that I did because it's just, I think it's just stunning. And um, I will show you some footage of um, uh, the way it fits so far. I mean, I, I chose uh, a bit of a wider size that I normally would. I chose the fourth size that she offers, uh, which is probably like, I would say a large, uh, or maybe a little bit even bigger. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, the idea was that since I'm using a super wash yarn, again, I knew that um, it would have a tendency to grow uh, with blocking, especially if I encourage it. And also, you know, because the cables are always very, you know, sort of stretchy, you can kind of figure out um, the shaping of your garment in the end. And this is a drop sleeve garment. Um, so the idea I had would be that I would make it shorter than uh, intended because I kind of like... Um, the look of you know where the hem falls just around the hips and not much longer and I didn't want it to also bunch uh, at the bottom and I wanted it to be a little bit form-fitting around the bust but kind of not too form-fitting around um, the the body the rest of the body um, yeah so I picked a bit of a, a bigger size and also I decided to let me see what other mods did I do I made the um, I made the um, armholes longer, so I knit for longer here. I mean, I have all the details uh, of my modifications in my on my Ravelry page for this um, project, and uh, yeah, it's really quite straightforward in terms of the shaping. Um, you know, uh, what can I say? It's bottom up, so you know, you knit all the way up. It's in the round, uh, there's a chart, there's written instructions, so it's all good. But then when you separate here, uh, just be aware that um, you have to just reuse the same chart. So you have to kind of be able to sort of translate a chart that's meant in the round um, to a chart that's uh, knitted flat. So you need to figure out what you're gonna do um, on the wrong sides which is not hard, but just so you know, it's not like spelled out. You have to, you have to figure it out yourself. Um, what else can I say? Yeah, I mean, I think the cabling is stunning. Um, I did make a couple small mistakes, uh, cross my cable the wrong way, but I think I'll just use duplicate stitch and try to f sort of fix it. Uh, I'll see if that works. 
So the only thing I have left to do, I did the neckline and um, because I added length in the um, armhole depth, uh, I also have a bit of a longer neckline, I mean longer, wider, I guess, um, which I like. It's, it's just right for me, I think. And I just need to uh, pick up stitches around here and just knit the sleeves. Uh, which will be should be uh, pretty easy knitting so TV knitting or whatever so this is my first uh, work in progress that I wanted to show you um, and yeah I'm super happy with it um, again I really feel like I'm pushing myself and what I've been knitting this year for myself uh, I was also trying to feature a designer who consistently makes very pretty um, designs and uh, she does do, she is a French designer, but I, I believe she always also has an English version. And I had no problems with the pattern, it was quite good. So yeah, I recommend that you check out her portfolio. I will put a link in the description below to her stores. And uh, yeah, that's it for work in progress number one. So, uh, for my work in progress uh, number two, uh, I think you're going to be disappointed in me uh, because I succumbed to the second sock syndrome on my Sax Point socks by Andrea Rangel. Um, I was so proud of myself that I had finished the first sock. So pretty. you know, and I did everything and, you know, I'm not a sock knitter, so this was kind of a big deal for me. So, uh, yeah, I was doing actually great. And look, you know, I was doing good. I did the little temporary, what do you call this, provisional sort of uh, line here where you then get those stitches back and work that heel but then look I had done all of this for the leg and then I realized <laughs> that I forgot the shaping uh, I forgot to put increases um, as it tells you to in the pattern I was just like going on and on and on not thinking not thinking and then I tried the sock on and I was like it seems quite snug uh, and I realized, yes, I forgot all the increases uh, because this pattern has you sort of work in some increases. I don't know if you can see here that there's some increases, which actually makes for a good fit, you know, around the calf. Uh, so, yeah, I have to frog back. <laughs> and um, I was so annoyed by this <laughs> that I did this that I just kind of put this away um, and I haven't touched them for like a couple months, I think. Um, so yeah, not great. But at some point I have to finish them because it's ridiculous and it's time. It's time for me to knit socks for myself and have hand knit socks. <laughs> so yes, I will have to just do it. Just frog it and keep going. Just keep moving. Just keep doing it. Um, so that is it for my works in progress. Um, I actually have a soon to be work in progress that I'm going to cast on, uh, probably later today, um, as a reward for actually recording this podcast. <laughs> I'm such a procrastinator. Um, and that project is going to be a Christmas, uh, present from my husband and it's going to be, um, a second... Ridari sweater, which uh, I made for myself at the beginning of the year and he really likes. So I ordered um, some Letlopi yarn uh, that he picked out. He actually picked out exactly uh, <laughs> the pattern um, sample that is shown on the pattern page, the, those colors. And I think it'll work quite well for him, this sort of gray and, um, and moss green color scheme. And um, yeah, so I'm going to get started with this and hopefully be done in time for Christmas. Uh, so I'm going to have to be good about um, dedicating some time uh, to knitting this sweater. 
and uh, that's it and then the next uh, segment um, that I wanted to introduce today is just kind of going over um, a few of the patterns that uh, I've noticed and uh, that have recently come out and uh, I'm just gonna put them out there with the names of the designers um, and a link uh, in the description below to their Ravelry stores um, just stuff that I thought was really pretty or fun or that I'm tempted to knit um, and uh, yeah so that's gonna be uh, the ending this time I don't have any recent um, garden videos maybe I'll do a special garden episode one day if I manage um, to do that uh, and I just wanted to say um, happy knitting and see you next time <laughs>